Hello, good evening, good evening. Welcome to this evening's live feed. All about weight loss, whoop whoop. My favorite topic. I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to this evening's live feed. All about weight loss. And I have got some killer content for you this evening. So just waiting for a few people to join in. Hello everyone, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening's live feed. I cannot wait to get started. So for once, I'm actually a minute early. That's fooled everyone, hasn't it? Unlike my usual one minute late, we're early today. So I'm sitting next to my sink so that I can demonstrate how to do things around my middle. I can get to my various different bits of my legs. I've got my book open at the digestive chapter. We've got that going on. I've got a whole load of notes. I've been speaking to the master all afternoon about this just to make sure no stone is unturned on this killer weight loss live feed, which we're gonna start any second. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to do this. Um, I did slightly steal my own thunder last night though, because I did start talking about it. Uh, hello, walnuts and cream. Walnuts and cream, this is all thanks to you, okay? This is because you said to me, what do I do about my sugar and cheese craving? Which then sent me off on one last night, all about cravings and what happens, and therefore, um, I decided that actually enough is enough and it is time to address the big topic of how do I lose weight? Losing, uh, what's this? Cheese and chocolate, that's okay. Don't you worry, we're about to sort this all out. Oh, you did the rescue breath, you didn't want to open your eyes. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased that's going to do loads for you. So right, gosh, loads of people joining in. I'll just, I won't start quite yet because there's lots of people still coming on board. So good evening and welcome to this evening's live feed all about weight loss and all the amazing things I'm going to tell you all about what you could do whilst we're in lockdown, hi Snoopy, to, um, to help you get the most amazing figure that you've always dreamed of and never, despite all our efforts, has happened. So um, welcome everybody. I'm just gonna start now. Hopefully Jules will join us in a minute. Just to say that, ah, oh, Jules, my God, speak of the devil. <laughs> I was just about to say Jules is gonna join us in a minute and there you were. So just to say there is so, oh, thank you. I've actually managed to have five minutes tonight to actually sort myself out. So you are so welcome. I actually have some makeup on and I've put a brush in my hair, which is uh, quite remarkable to be honest. But anyway, now I don't think this evening I am going to be able to cover anything other than weight loss, okay? Because I think it's just, it's such a big topic and I've got so much to go through. So um, if anyone has any other questions, because I have been given some, I will address them in the next feed, okay? And just to let you all know that Jules and I are working really hard starting these fact sheets, okay? Um, Jules has been at it all day, um, basically trimming up because we've got so much content floating about, we've been just sorting it all out. So um, the menopause and the Qigong one will go up um, and then there's all sorts of other ones coming, okay? And so we will be addressing your questions, I promise. Um, and I have a list of all the questions that are still outstanding. So if what, what we won't cover tonight, um, I will get to um, in feeds this week, I promise. Okay, so tonight is about weight loss, right? So are we all ready? Are we sitting comfortably? <laughs> Oh, poor Jules. What do you mean, whip crack? You crack the whip on me, not the other way around, honestly. God, honestly. It's like, you know, honestly, when was it last yet less last night when I was having a fight with my light, which is just about okay. Jules was like, are we doing the feed yet? It was like one minute past nine. It's like, honestly. Right, anyway, without further ado, because I have an hour of content. So Jules, I know you're gonna pick up questions as we go along. Guys, I'm not gonna be distracted into questions too much because there's like loads of really killer content that I want to go into and I need to get into my flow. So we are gonna talk about weight loss. Um, it is my favorite thing to talk about, why? Because it has been the bane of my life until I learned all these amazing techniques and um, I've gone from having a whole load of problems in my youth to putting on huge amounts of weight when I was pregnant despite barely eating anything at all and kind of wondering why it was that um, I was always so heavy um, when I didn't really feel like I ate very much and did everything that I was supposed to do which was uh, running in the gym and uh, I had a personal trainer that's how I met Aaron and um, uh, following like all sorts of various diets over the course of the years until of course as always I discovered Chinese medicine and it just illuminated a whole new approach to the entire topic which I'm now going to impart onto you so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to basically can you just leave behind everything that you've ever been told so far okay because a lot of it is just simply not true and if it were true 
none of you would be joining me on this feed because you'd think, well, I don't need to know about weight loss because I'm happy as I am. Um, and by the way, of course, we all are happy as we are, but most people I met in clinic would quite like to lose at least half a stone and kind of wonder as they get older, it seems to be increasingly difficult to do. So the first thing to say is that really in Chinese medicine, there are four main reasons why we can't lose weight, okay? And let's start at the beginning. The first reason why most of us find it really difficult to lose weight, despite, I'm assuming, a, a, a conventional approach to diet and exercise, okay? So if we're all like overeating and doing no exercise at all, of course, obviously, that stands to reason that's not going to work. But if you are one of the many, many people I have met over my years in clinic who are doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing and yet don't seem to be getting the results, then this is the information for you. So the first thing to say is that we need to look at the body first. We need to forget about kind of the symptoms of, you know, I've got fat legs or a fat middle or I get cravings or, you know, I can't exercise or whatever those things are. We just need to start at the beginning and go, okay, what is the first reason why the body resists weight loss? And the first basic reason is the stress response. Now, before you all switch off and think, oh yeah, I know all about this. It's like, well, actually most people don't know about what the stress response does. So I'm not going to dwell on the bit that we do know. Okay, I'm going to talk about the bit that we don't know. And I did slightly touch on this last night. And the first thing to say is that when it's, it's the liver, okay? Now the liver has a major relationship with the stress response. And the stress response is one of the absolute fundamental reasons as to why we can't lose weight. And uh, and we are all massively stressed. Less so now, okay, with lockdown, I think we've all started to take a breath and noticed how much calmer our lives actually can be when we're not doing our daily chores, okay, and how much stress that puts on the body. But one of the main problems that the stress response does is that the liver is responsible for the levels of glucose in the blood. So when we are stressed, What's supposed to happen is, you know, we're, we're calm and then something stressful happens and then the liver spikes glucose into the bloodstream and then we run, okay? Except this is what's not happening because the, glu the, the body's doing everything it's supposed to do but we're not actually moving. We're kind of sat at our desk and then we're sort of, the, the stress response is a mental thing and it's something that we're responding to with telephone calls or emails or whatever. And therefore what we need to do is um, we often then are on a diet so we tend to kind of be very good at breakfast and sort of very good at lunch, uh, or we skip lunch altogether, or we've skipped breakfast altogether, or we're rushing on the hoof, or any of the, or all of the above. And then what then tends to happen is this override situation kicks in. Now it either kicks in at about three o'clock in the afternoon when you are absolutely exhausted and you've just got to eat sugar. It's like a craving, or you think you're gonna kind of keel over, or it comes in later on in the evening at about like, as walnuts and cream is saying, sort of seven-ish or maybe nine-ish. Slightly, the, the timing slightly depends on the, the specifics of your own body. But if you are getting one of those override situations, that is normally the liver. And what's happening is, is that the liver is injecting glucose into the blood supply, like stress response, stress response, stress response. And eventually, because you're not giving it balanced meals and you're not relaxed, the liver basically realizes that it's basically out of glucogen, uh, glucose, and then it goes, oh, okay, so it will then trigger an override. And that override is going to be way more powerful than any willpower that you would have instigated that day again. Right, today, this is it. There's gonna be no mini eggs for me this afternoon. I'm not having that cake. I'm not eating that cheese at 11 o'clock at night or whatever it is. It's because the liver has basically completely overridden everything else going on in your body. So therefore, one of the main reasons as to why we then end up breaking our diet is because basically the liver needs food. So what is the trick to this? Well, the first thing to say is that we absolutely have to engage the rest mode in the body. And this is why we do the lunchtime meditation each day. This is why in the Hey You Method, we have the rescue breath. Because the way to unravel that bit is we've got to allow the body to relax. Okay, so that we can switch this whole process off, this constant injection thing going on from the liver has to calm. And the way that we do this is through the breath. And this is absolutely crucial to understand. You don't have to buy anything. It's not a diet, it's not a supplement. It's just knowing, okay, and learning this really simple breathing technique. And you don't have to do the whole lunchtime meditation. Okay, that's great. But we distilled it down into the Hey You Method as one breath. Okay, you breathe in, do it with me now, breathe in. And as you breathe out, 
Imagine a smile in your lower belly. Do one more, breathe in. Imagine a smile in the lower belly. Now, what you'll notice, we've just done two breaths, some of you possibly just one, that completely calms the body down, okay? You can switch off the stress mode in one breath. And ideally, whilst in lockdown, you can learn meditation, which is like the absolute like gold star of relaxation. But one breath will unravel the whole of the kind of like stress, 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 stress that's going on in our lives. And that immediately relaxes the liver. And that immediately takes all of the pressure off the body. And the trick to doing this is looking at yourself, looking at your life, being truthful to yourself and going, okay, how stressed am I? So like, okay, I was really stressed before I learned all this stuff and I learned these techniques and I've applied them to myself and they learn, they really, really work. I mean, the great thing I found about my body along the way is it's never given me any favors at all. I'm not naturally pretty or naturally thin or kind of naturally great, just, but or I didn't naturally age better than, than a normal person. Well, so therefore these techniques, if they're working on me, they're going to work on you because they work. They work on bodies because bodies are all idiosyncratic like fingerprints. But ultimately we share, we all share the same kind of connections going on in our bodies. And the stress response is absolutely going to play complete havoc with your weight loss um, goals. And the other thing to add to this is that if you are then going to the gym, Okay, okay, right, okay, I'm gonna, it's calories in versus calories out, and I'm gonna starve myself, and I'm only gonna hit this and tell everyone what I'm eating, and then I'm gonna go to the gym at the end of my busy day, and I'm gonna run for 45 minutes, I'm gonna burn 600 calories. If I've just described your weight loss um, intentions and your exercise routine, this actually only makes matters worse. Oh, yes, it does. Why? Because this kind of exercise is stressful on the body. It creates more stress hormones so now you've got your liver is now yes you've you've kind of at least you've got the stress kind of response out of the body because you're like burning the fight or flight me mechanism but the body is being stressed whilst it's exercising and this is why these gentle exercises that we do every morning this the, the qigong you're doing with me and if you're signed up to aaron's 12 rivers jules please give aaron's email and um, hook again so if you're signed up to aaron's 12 rivers or even his free exercise classes as well they are based on relaxing the body whilst you bring in the oxygen okay and you you move the body in a very slow gentle way because you're strengthening the body in a very relaxed state so you're draw so you're not stressing it anymore now a lot of people go yeah yeah but i like my exercise and good okay we like exercise this is why we have the tapper she says rummaging around because i've got all sorts of stuff there which i would show you but i'm too terrified to move my phone lest lest the light collapses again this is why we have the tapper if you love your aerobic -y, exercise -y type stuff which is great because if you love it then you do it you must tap the body at least afterwards okay the Taoist masters would tap for 20 minutes after vigorous exercise because you've got to allow the body to go back into a rest state not just jump onto the treadmill run recklessly for 40 minutes jump off and then rush home that's going to keep the body in a stress phase you're not allowing it to relax it back down so then the liver isn't being attended to so no one no one i've met is going to tap for 20 minutes you might get two out of a person which is great and that will do the trick so you know tap your body for, tw for two to three five minutes if you're doing vigorous exercise, if you're doing no exercise, tap your body, okay? Um, you know, what, what, the reason why I'm doing the feeds as often as I am is that if you do the half hour, 40 minutes you've gone with me in the morning and, and the walk that the government's asking us to do, then that will do the trick. Okay, that's why I'm doing it because that's what I'm doing. I do my Qigong with you, it takes about 40 minutes and then I go for a 45 minute walk later in the afternoon and seems to be doing the trick. Um, so it's, that's, that's the first thing to talk about, okay? Let me just double check my notes to make sure I've not missed anything. So it's really important that you have to keep the nervous system basically nice and calm to get the best out of any weight loss. And that then takes me a bit to kind of eating patterns, okay, as well. Because the thing about eating patterns that what I know from most people that go on diets is that they tend to do, they restrict food, okay? And now there's a 
fine line between overeating and undereating. Okay, and both don't work in different ways. If you overeat, obviously that's not going to help, and we know that. But one of the reasons, as I've just explained, that we tend to overeat is because of the stress response, because the body's so stressed, it, it, it just needs food, because it knows that you're gonna shove it straight back in the firing line the next day, and it needs to up its energy. So therefore, what's going to, what the body's gonna do is it gets energy from two sources, food and breath. Mm. Food and breath. You heard it here first. Everyone thinks it's all about food. It's not, okay. I've been sat here now for uh, 20, 15 minutes. I haven't eaten anything. Uh, boy, oh boy, okay, I haven't really paused for breath either. <laughs> but I have been breathing. Um, and this is the thing, that when you're looking to nourish the body, you start with breath, okay? Mantak Chia wrote this amazing book, which is in the book, um, in the, um, uh, the book section at the back of my book there's a reading list and this book is in there and it's called the 80 mortal healers and these 80 mortal healers are basically the eight healing modalities that we as human beings have available to us and the first one is breath not water not food not supplements not some weird thing that we've bought off the internet breath free breath it's just go and stand by an open window and breathe it in okay and that is the first thing that your body wants for energy so this is another reason why when we're looking to calm the nervous system and calming the liver, we do qigong and we do the breathing exercise. So we, and we as, a, as me, as the feeder, I'm doing this for you every single day, every morning, every lunchtime, and it calms the body and that calms the liver and the body gets energized and, and relaxed and feels able to cope with what it's got to do. So the, 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 the thing with this is that it then stops you overeating because you simply don't need the food. Your body's not thinking, I need energy, I, I need, I need, I just need. I'm just like a completely strung out, overworked, completely flung out, I just need to eat. And then in comes the override. I'm gonna have cheese, I'm gonna have chocolate, I'm gonna have bread, I'm gonna have whatever's in the fridge. And then, you know, the patient who, who I would have seen has said, right, I've now cleared everything out. Now I'm rummaging around looking for, I don't know, muesli, cereal, doesn't matter, something. Because the liver's overriding, goes, just need food. So if you calm the whole thing down, and you breathe, and you do qigong, and you do the rescue breath meditation, or at the very least, tap and do the rescue breath every now and then, your body will nourish itself with breath and simply won't be sending you these override signals to overeat. Okay, that's to sort of complete the first bit. I slightly rambled off and went back in again there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, then let's talk about then under eating. Okay, because so that's the, so the first, the way to deal with overeating is you breathe instead. Okay, hopefully everyone's got that. If you are under eating. Now what's this going on? Right, now I'm on a diet, okay? I am on a diet, right? It's Easter, I've eaten too much, it's all going wrong, I'm sick of myself, I hate it, I am on a diet, and I am now gonna tell everyone what I'm eating. And this diet normally comprises of starving oneself at some point or other. We are either doing the 5-2, or we're intermittent fasting and not eating till one o'clock, or we're skipping breakfast, or skipping lunch, or we're eating breakfast in a rush, or we're eating a Cam drinking a Cambridge diet shake, or we're on some minuscule portion control thing, or we're protein only, or whatever it is, okay? Normally what it involves is a sense of starvation in the body. And because what we're trying to do is kind of create this ketosis, kind of apparently fasting's really good for us. I don't know, fasting is good for you, actually. Fasting is really good for you as long as you are meditating and creating a sense of spiritual gain from the fact that you're shutting down the eating mechanism in the body and that you've stopped working and that you can actually relax into your fast and go into deep meditative complex, at that point, fasting is extremely good for you because the idea of fasting, like if you look at say Lent or Ramadan or any of these religious periods where you are supposed to kind of cut back, it is you are also supposed to be going to a religious place and building up your spirit because you should be sacrificing one thing and building another. And as again, as I was saying, if you're gonna cut down on the food, you've gotta up on the spirituality, you've gotta up on the breath, but we're not doing that bit, we're just telling each other that we're just kind of skipping breakfast and doing this and doing that. It's, it's, it, the, the conversation has to just kind of go back to how it's supposed to be. And again, the problem, if you are under eating, is of course you're going to stress the body because the body goes, oh great, I haven't got any food. Right, so what it knows is that sure as hell it's going to override you later on. It's just going to catch you back out again. So you can skip breakfast to your heart's content. Sooner or later, it will get the better of you. And we all know this, if we look deep in our hearts, me too, the number of times I've declared to anybody who happens to poor things happen to be my friends. 
and they've listened to me over the years going on about all the various boring diets that I've done and punished myself with and none of which have worked at all apart from until I discovered all this brilliant content. I'm like, ah, oh, finally I'm happy. So the point is that you need to look for balance, okay? This is where China, and I know so it's really boring to talk about balance, except it's not because you see, Chinese medicine really gives us the basis for this. If you like fasting, okay, and this is something that Jules, I know you'll pick up on in the comments, right? If you like something, if you like vigorous exercise, I'm not saying don't do it, I'm saying do it, but you need to relax the body and tap, right? If you like fasting, you go, yeah, well, I like fasting, I like skipping breakfast, actually I prefer, okay, then your body's okay with that. But in which case, you need to make sure that when you are fasting, that you are being really good to yourself and that you are doing breathing exercises whilst you're not eating, because the energy of the body is created by breath and food. So if you're skipping one, you've got to up the other, okay? Useful tip. If whatever your eating program is, whatever it is, whether it's two meals a day, one meal a day, three meals a day, whatever it is, you've got to go for the same size portions. Okay, this is a fundamental process in Chinese medicine, whether it doesn't matter if it's just breakfast and dinner or lunch and dinner or breakfast and lunch or all three, you've got, your stomach is the size of a clenched fist, here it is, okay, and it loves regularity. The stomach is part of the earth element in Chinese medicine and if you look at the earth around us, it's cyclical, it moves like this. And it's like a metronome inside the body that wants the same thing. The stomach's here, the food comes in, it digests it and pushes it through the body. And then, then it gives you a hunger signal and on it goes again. And you repeat, 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 repeat. And if you are not eating, overeating, starving yourself, then eating too much and just not and, and eat irregular eating patterns. So one minute you're eating at eight in the morning, the next day it's at 5 a.m., the next day you're not eating it at all. You are tiring the chi of the digestive system. The energy of the digestive system is being punished and it can't cope and you weaken it, which means in, in Western language, that means you are affecting the metabolism of the body. And we don't want that. What we're looking for are to be those really annoying people that can eat what they like and it doesn't seem to make any difference. That's because the, the chi of the digestive system is strong. And if you're messing about with the timings of your food and the sizes of the portions, and then you're going into kind of starve mode and then feast mode, your body's just getting so confused it doesn't know what's going on. So the Chinese masters will always talk about regularity of food. It's before, I haven't even talked to you yet about what we're eating, okay? This is all about how we're eating and how we're living. So if you are stressed and you are eating irregularly and you are starving yourself and then overcompensating at another point in the day or even the week with what you're doing, you are progressively damaging the energy of your digestive system. So it's really important to look honestly at what you do and go, okay, I need to acknowledge this is the size of my stomach and I need to have regular food. And if you want to fast, that's fine. But remember, you've got to do the breath work if you're gonna do that and be regular about it. Okay, commit at least to regularity. There's one thing you can take out of this feed. Commit to yourself to be honest about what you're doing and to be regular about what it is. So walnuts and cheese, for example, if you are eating cheese or, or chocolate late at seven o'clock because that's what you want to do, that's okay, but commit to it. And then go, do you know what? I am gonna have a piece. Do you know what? I'm gonna have a piece of cheese at seven o'clock. I jolly well am. And you go, okay, so we don't feel guilty about it. We, we acknowledge it, we own it, we, we bring it in as a regular thing, we portion control it. Okay, it's a trick I learned from my mother, who's very slim. Um, she would have a chocolate every single night at nine o'clock and it would sit on the arm of her chair for about 45 minutes before she actually ate it. It used to kill me as a child, I'm like, are you gonna eat that chocolate or what? And she'd look at it. It was one really nice chocolate every single day and she'd have it every night at about nine o'clock. And I would suggest that you do the same. So rather than go into the fridge and then feel guilty and kind of go, oh, I'm gonna eat, like put it on a plate, set, set it, put it, place it, go and do whatever it is that you do at 7 p.m. if you're gonna watch a box set or whatever, have it there and look forward to it and, and own it as a thing and bring it in as something that we do regularly because clearly your body needs a little something at that time of day. Now, of course, in the meantime, look at the stress response, your eating patterns in the day, not starving yourself and then overeating at a later point, but just acknowledging your day-to-day -day patterns and, and giving them to you. So my example of this is my eating habits are 
pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, but I had a major, major weight problem after my twins were born. My body was completely shot to pieces. It didn't matter what I did. I just could not get myself sorted out at all. And that's what sort of made me really go into this and learn. Um, and it was, it was doing everything that I'm talking to you about tonight. It was a combination of Qigong and the breathing and regular exercise and regularity of my eating and, and all of the things that I'm talking about, which ultimately sorted it out. And one thing that I've learned is that, you know, I also like my mum, I like a little kind of bit of chocolate at the end of the day. Um, and I can't cheat on that. I can't have it early on. I can't have it, if I have it at lunchtime, I go, it all goes wrong. But if I have it after my evening meal, um, I have like, I have mini eggs because my kids love them. I have like four, dum dum dum, and they just sit there on a little saucer and, and like, I really make a thing about it. So I have my chocolate every day. I have it. I don't, I'm not denying myself. It's a really important thing, but just because I'm having it doesn't mean I'm stuffing my face with it either. Um, and it's all about this regularity, okay? And, and, and acknowledging what you are. And I think the other thing to say about this is that diets um, all about willpower, okay? You know, we get to the end of our Easter and we go, right, that's it, I've had enough. I am going on a diet. I am going to cut out this, I'm going to cut out that. I'm fasting and doing all going to the gym for a million hours a day, blah, blah, blah. Um, the problem with that is that what that does is willpower is the energy connected to the kidneys. And the kidneys have got a finite amount of energy to supply, particularly because our kidneys in Chinese medicine are responsible for the aging process, lots to do with the stress response, thinking, memory, our bones, um, our fertility, our hair, um, th th there's th lots and lots of stuff, of our urinary system for a start, um, there's all this stuff the kidneys are responsible for and they are also responsible for fear and willpower um, and at the moment there's quite a lot of fear going on so they're going to be affected and willpower and what that means is that if you set your intention and your will and you go right I am going to go on a diet for the next three weeks and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that like it, you, you get very quickly the kidneys get worn out and you just lose the will to live literally and you just lose the willpower and the way to approach these things rather than through the willpower which is a limited source is through universal love which is an infinite source what's that she's talking about well the universal love is the higher aspect of the heart and the heart has got this like boundless ability okay it's limitless so when we are approaching diet, it's a very bad idea to approach it through will because it's a finite, limited thing that's ultimately just gonna trip you up, okay? And most of us have probably been there. Um, whereas approaching it from the, the love is a much easier way of approaching it. So it's, it's just a mindset, okay? So what you do is you just relax, you just relax and you do the qigong in the morning and you do your breathing at lunchtime and you tap your body and you acknowledge the stress response and you put some regularity into what you're doing, okay? We've got all that. So we're not starving ourselves, we're not overeating, we're just doing our qigong, we're relaxing our bodies, we're acknowledging the fact that all of this precious info, once Jules has got a minute, we're gonna type it all up for you, so it's all there in black and white. But then what we're gonna do is we're going to do it from a place of love. We're going, do you know what? I really like my food. We're okay with that. Food's nice. Food releases, Pleasure hormones in the brain, so we like to eat, it's nice, it's a pleasure, and we need pleasure in life, and pleasure is pleasurable. So we need to approach it from a place of, what do I actually like? What do I like to eat? How do I like to feel? What do I want to feel like? How happy am I about what I'm doing right now? And this isn't then about, well, I'm only happy if I'm a size 10, okay? This is about enjoying every mouthful that you put into your body, and really acknowledging what you're doing with it. Rather than willpower and going, right, I'm only eating a chicken breast and then I've got a Cambridge diet shake tomorrow morning and then I'm in misery. It's like, that's not gonna work. Well, it might work for a bit, but sooner or later it's gonna trip up. Whereas if you go, do you know what? I love myself. I'm all right about me. I mean, warts and all, I'm okay with what, who I am and what I'm doing. And I want to honor myself and be a good person and be a nice person and be a happy person. So what, what am I gonna eat then? What, 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 what's going to make me love me? What's going to come from that place where I'm going to amplify that feeling? And this is where the Chinese will come in with things like, oh my goodness me, revolutionary ideas like seasonal eating, local produce, animals from farms, whereby you kind of, if you're living in, in a city where you get, say, Abel and Cole, for example, where they, they will actually give you the provenance of your food. And look for the quality of the food and look to love yourself through eating, not punishing yourself from either putting yourself on an astringent diet or, 
or picking uh, and then feeling guilty about it. It's like, right, I love myself. I'm going to have a piece of cheese at the end of the day. Okay, well, what cheese then? Let's make it a good one. Let's have a nice piece of cheese. Let's not overeat it. Let's go for really good quality, a really nice chocolate, like my dear deceased mother. You know, she'd have, she, would, she did not stint herself on this one chocolate because she only ate one, so she could afford to have a, a nice one. Um, eat really good quality food and love yourself with it and, and look at what you enjoy eating. But when we're going into what we enjoy eating, of course, obviously, if you go to me, well, I enjoy eating kind of like, you know, bacon and eggs and fried bread and hash browns. Like, okay, well, we're going to have to do a little bit of unpicking in terms of the kind of food we enjoy to eat. But within the boundaries of good quality food and, you know, intelligent food choices, really think about what your breakfast is. Like, what do I enjoy eating at breakfast? And really chew it and eat it well and love it. And go, actually, do you know what? I don't want to eat my children's leftovers, actually, thanks. I don't really want those cocoa pops. I'm quite happy with my sourdough toast and, and egg from my chickens outside. Thanks very much. I am happy and my body feels nourished and nurtured as a result of this food. So consequently, I don't feel the need to kind of put my willpower in place where it's like, I am only eating protein or whatever it is that we're doing for today. Um, and it makes a massive difference that if you approach your food with, from a place of love and a place of gratitude um, and you chew your food slowly and you eat in a calm, loving environment and you love yourself with what you're doing, it is a much easier process for you to actually stick to where we're going. I'm not going to airy-fairy on this point, but this is ultimately about make, helping you stick to what it is that you want to do, okay? So if you relax the body and you give yourself a sort of metronome of regularity and you remember your stomach's about this size and you eat the same kind of quantity each time and you set out things that you actually enjoy eating and enjoy eating them and go, actually, I am enjoying this. I'm not enjoying the quantity and the gluttonous aspect of like, you know, 500 grams of pasta and I want to eat loads. It's no, it's just, but I like what I like to eat and I'm going to put it on a nice plate and make it appeal to me. And interestingly, when you again look at Asian culture, this concept of love and enjoyment of food and the pleasure of food um, is a huge thing. So for example, if anyone's been to Thailand, they have a huge thing about like kind of fruit carving and putting flowers on the food and in Japan they take it to the nth degree and it's absolutely visually perfect the way they present everything because the stomach um sorry the liver opens to the eye but the meridian of the stomach starts just here so the stomach also has a huge relationship to the eye which is probably why we have that expression with eyes bigger than your stomach okay how interesting is that so food to appear visually pretty is a really important thing and one of the mistakes that I think we make in the West is that we confuse the visual beauty of food and that pleasure signals with quantity. So often people who are struggling with their weight, they kind of want to see a big plate of food. Like my husband, Mr. Brindle, he loves a big plate of food. You get him on Sunday, it's like a big plate of food. Oh, yeah. Whereas um, if you're struggling with your weight, you think, oh, yeah, but I like a big plate of food. And then you've got your little bit of food on a big plate. It's like, oh, that looks a bit miserable. So a trick that I learned in Japan is really useful is to have a whole load of paraphernalia of plates really makes a difference. So if you're wanting to shrink your portions down and take pleasure from the presentation of the food rather than the size of it, have a plate on a, have a bowl on a plate on a plate, for example, on a mat. Okay, that's what they do in Japan. They will have like a mat. So you have a placemat like this and then you would have like, then, then there would be, so this is your placemat and then this would be on that. Look at the things I've got going next week. And then finally, it will be on there. And then eventually, if you were lucky, the actual food itself would be this bit here. Okay, but visually, it looks like there's all this stuff going on. But actually, what you're eating is this bit here. That's the kind of trick that really, really works. Because And then, of course, they're eating it with chopsticks, of course. So chopsticks are fantastic because, of course, it's all in a bowl. It's all much smaller. The bowl is the size of your stomach and the chopsticks take forever to eat. So you're slowing down the whole process. So consequently, you, of course, feel full more quickly. So this is this whole thing that I'm going around here is all about the fact that you want to make sure that your food is visually appealing, but in terms of pretty, not quantity, so that the quantity naturally shrinks down, and then you slow down the eating process and you're chewing your food properly, which in turn is strengthening the digestive system. And of course, you've plugged that into the fact that the, the quality of the food that you're eating is really high and it really is appealing to your heart. Like, oh, I really like these noodles. They're really yummy. Oh my God, prawn stir fry, yum, yum, yum. And that you're really getting excited about what you're eating and that you savour it 
um, and that you eat in a calm environment, that you know, we're not having arguments, you know, you've got nice music playing, the lights are dim. These are, we're not just kind of standing at the fridge and like shoveling it in our mouths because we're on the rush. These are ways which will massively strengthen your body. It will, it will strengthen the digestive system. It will make you happier. It will mean that you don't feel that you're on a diet and living a life of complete sort of menial yuckiness whilst everyone else is enjoying themselves. Um, and if you want a treat, then please, please, um, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, what's that? I've just seen your thing. Is the Zee Woo clock in the book? No, it's not. The Zee Woo clock is not in the book, but uh, we can tell you about it. Uh, um, oh, I want to know what the Z, what, what would you want to know? You probably want to know about when the, the, the digestive system is at its, um, at its strongest, that's in the morning. So the digestion sits in at 7 a.m., if that was what the question was. Um, it, it goes from the stomach from uh, 7 till 9, and then from the, so the spleen 9 to 11, if that was the question. <laughs> um, anyway, so basically, that's a little bit of a foray into kind of a whole load of stuff. So basically, what have we covered so far? So there's a lot to, to go through. So first of all, to say that you've got to keep the body relaxed, okay? If your body's not relaxed, you're going to really struggle. Um, do not stress the body by kind of massive gaps or abnormalities in terms of your pattern of eating. So if you want to fast, remember to do the breathing exercises and to keep the body especially relaxed in the, in the fasting times. Don't just carry on business as usual. Um, when you are eating, please keep the, the meals at regular size. Remember your stomach. Ideally, eat from a bowl, eat with chopsticks, have your placemats, trick yourself, indulge yourself. Really go for quality. Go for the best quality food you can afford to buy. It makes a massive difference. Eat fresh, eat locally. Eating processed food, the calorie counted meals and stuff, it's just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't satisfy the body. Um, these are really important things. Now, the other thing to then go into is that one of the big no-no's that I was just about to touch on there was about the kind of the kinds of foods that we eat, because, you know, I, I'm assuming I'm in talking to, a, you know, an intelligent group of people. So what we don't want to be doing is eating um, basically what we would classify in Chinese medicine, the four whites. OK, the four whites are salt, sugar, dairy and wheat. OK, so a kind of a traditional English diet, sorry for people not living in England because I know we're a bit international, but like, okay, a Western diet, shall we say, of sliced bread, um, processed food, um, loads of sugary snacks, fizzy drinks, anything processed whatsoever, like all, all of which, like all of that stuff has to get cut out, okay? It, we know this stuff. This is now really, when I'm talking to people like you, this is common sense stuff, okay? So there is no point eating two slices of white bread with some kind of processed flora type margarine, followed by, you know, a tin of baked beans, which is slathered in salt, and then some grated cheese on the top. This is just not, this is not good eating. And if you eat kind of very heavily greasy foods and processed foods, and I can barely even say it actually, and really sugary foods, you know, this really weakens the digestive system. So does ice, so does cold fizzy drinks, so does food out of the fridge, okay? So does cheese and crackers, if you eat too many of them. It really clobbers the digestion. The digestion likes to be hot, warm, regular. And if you start adding in very difficult to digest foods, it weakens the system and in turn sort of slows the metabolism and it doesn't do you any favours at all. So those kinds of no-nos are an absolute given. Okay, we need to be of course looking at a healthy, fresh, locally produced, um, well, well curated diet, okay, of vegetables and fish and vegetables, um, sorry, vegetables again and fruits, but seasonal things, okay, and cooked fruits. Um, in the winter time, particularly, don't eat cold food, salad, think about seasonal foods. You want to eat cooked food in the winter. There's a lot of information in the back of my book about seasonal eating, and Jules and I do cover it in the Instagram as well. We, we're about to put a load of posts up. In fact, we have today about eating sour food right now in the springtime. Right now, you should eat pork, not chicken, for example. Um, in the winter time, there's different food that you should be eating, and we should shift the food with the seasons, okay? And this is something that we talk a lot. There's loads of stuff on the IGTV all about what to do right now. Um, and of course, if there's stuff that you like, I've just seen someone here say um, ice cream. Okay, can I just say that of, you've got to, of course, treat yourself, okay? And it's all about um, balance. So I like ice cream, but I don't eat it very often. But I've had some yesterday because it was Sunday lunch and like the kids were eating it and I wasn't going to, officially I wasn't going to have some. But then I did, I thought, no, you know what? I actually fancy a bit. So I had a little bit, but I didn't have loads. 
and it was probably about the equivalent of half a scoop, but I had it in a very small little dish. And then I, you know, I went for a walk afterwards and I won't have it for the rest of the week. And always on a Monday, I'm always super strict. So if on a Sunday, it's a little bit like slightly, it's a Sunday, so there's a bit more going on. Then you kind of, you know, you just sort of tone it down the next day and just make sure that you've got your walk, you do your things that you need to do. Um, and the other thing that I find as helpful guidelines for most people when I'm talking to them is um, uh, things like um, the anti-candida diet and the low histamine diets. These are useful guidelines for people. If you're finding yourself struggling to lose weight, normally, normally, it's a bit general, but if you're very stressed and you have kind of like heat related things, i.e. you tend to swell up, up here with hot the hives, sort of like, you know, swollen throat, swollen glands, things up here, that's more sort of stress response -y histamine. And I find that the low histamine diet is a really good one for people to follow because it's very healthy. Um, and if you're more dampy, which is more, more my kind of body type, where you tend to sort of, you know, you sort of put weight on quite easily, but more lower down, um, then that tends to be the anti-candida diet is a good general guideline, okay? And therefore, the lady who was asking about nuts, uh, nuts, it depends uh, on your body type and they shouldn't have salt on them. And it depends if you're vegan and it depends on a whole load of things. And if you've got very high histamine levels in your body, if you're very stressed, nuts are not a good idea. Um, if, on the other hand, the ice cream lady, if, you, if you're very damp, then ice cream is a really bit of a no-no and you kind of want to try and limit that to a treat. A treat, Sundays, you know. And I think that's something that we're all really thinking about now we're in lockdown is kind of, you know, the pace at which our lives were going before. We were just so exhausted and stressed from what we had to do that you kind of had to treat yourself quite a lot because it was just so hard to keep going. Whereas now it's like, it's, a bit, it's, it's hard in other ways, awful things happening, but you know, we are at home, it's a bit calmer. And then, you know, there's not quite so much pressure to kind of eat quite so much. Uh, what is anti-candida? Uh, well, I just Google it. It's a, the only reason I'm chucking it at you in this feed is because it's a really easy thing to Google. And basically it's certain foods which basically exacerbate candida in the body, which is um, kind of thrush-like symptoms. But um, I give that one to you because in Chinese medicine, if the body's a bit damp, which is a kind of Chinese expression, which you'll think, what's she talking about? Basically, if you're prone to getting fat quite quickly, normally one of the main reasons, apart from the stress that I've explained, and of course, bad eating practices, is because the body can get a bit on the damp side. So following an anti-candida program kind of nips the dampness in the bud. So it's quite a useful thing to try. Um, purely because I'm not in a one-to-one -one clinic, so I can't look at each of you individually and, and have a look at what, what specifics I need to give you. But those are two general diets which are really good because they're really healthy and they're really varied and they work really well. Um, and it ties in with everything that I'm talking to you about. So, um, so okay, so we've talked about stress and we've talked about lots of food guidelines and we've talked about obviously not eating greasy, fatty, sugary, processy kind of salty foods. That's a bit of an obvious one. But the next bit is really to talk to you about like one of the main culprits of people who can't lose weight is they have a weak digestive system. And unbeknown to me after the twins, that was largely what the problem was that I had. And of course, then I immediately just like, went, the minute I stopped breastfeeding, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sick of this. I went on a really strict diet, like 600 calories a day, completely starved myself and didn't lose any weight. I was absolutely beside myself. I was completely starving hungry and miserable as sin. And it didn't work. And the reason why was because I was making matters even worse because my digestive system was shot to pieces from this massive twin pregnancy. Um, and basically, um, I, it didn't, there was no energy, in, there was no chi in the digestive system. So th the more I starved myself, the worse it got. And I know there are so many people out there that say this to me. They go, I just don't eat very much. It's not fair. I only need to look at a piece of cake and I put weight on. I go, oh, I know. The reason why is because the digestive system is slightly shot to pieces. And that's largely because many of us sort of start dieting, say in our teenage years, um, and we're given all the wrong advice and we think we're doing the right thing, but in fact, it's not the right thing. And by the time you get later on in life, you're in a bit of a pickle. And this is like one of the major candidates of people. And often if your digestion is weak, you often find yourself um, on very low calorie diets and you never seem to lose weight. You always feel that you're overweight the whole time and you can't sort yourself out. And um, you get tired very easily, you get tired after eating, you get food cravings. 
This is all, and, and often fat around the middle, and this is all to do with a weak digestion, okay? Right, so if this is you, this is where the good news starts because this is not cured by dieting, okay? You follow all the advice I've given you, so, you know, the stress and the portion control and, and eating sensibly, um, but now what you're gonna do is you're going to add in these Qigong movements that I'm teaching you every day, I promise you, they work okay why because your digestive system is basically here okay so it starts with your stomach and your spleen over here on the left hand side and your liver's on the right then you've got basically you've got the duodenum and you've got the small and the large intestines and there's a few other bits and pieces going on but in a nutshell it's here and in chinese medicine this is called the middle jowl okay and the middle jowl is extremely uh, damaged by a sedentary lifestyle look at me sitting on the edge of my bathroom sink all evening and i'm sitting and i'm scrunching so when we do the qigong in the morning we're tapping tapping this area is the best thing for it we're bashing our spleens either side every morning and then we're doing these twists that we're doing so if any of you haven't yet come on the morning qigong please please this is, the, it's not about, diet. as long as you're doing the advice I'm giving you, which is about the greasy foods, the four whites, regular eating patterns, resting the body, okay? If then you're the next level, is you've got to get to work on your metabolism and the Qigong is the way to do it. And the basic Qigong that I do with you every morning, trust me, why do you think I've chosen those exercises? Because I had to sort myself out and I've had to go through a whole load of content to find the killer things that in my busy, hectic lifestyle have actually absolutely 100% without question made the difference. And then off Jules and I have gone into researching, knowing that they work, knowing the understanding, we have to go into all the way back again to research so that we can deliver it back to you. And the great thing is this stuff is free. You don't like, we're not selling you anything at all. You just do this stuff with me in the morning. Just learn these simple exercises. There's 10 of them in total and they are life changing, okay, to your metabolism. You, it's all about, making these twist movements to strengthen the digestive system, okay? There's a, there's a few of them that we teach and they are so simple to do. And if you don't have time for that, you think, oh, I can't be bothered with that, then, then use your tapper, okay? If you're gonna do one thing for your digestion, tap your abdominal cavity many times a day. This is why I created the Hey You Method and why there's two platforms, because the Hey You Method is really for those people that are like, yeah, 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 but I can't be bothered. I just want one thing, so do this, okay, do this. And if you don't want to buy a tapper, do it like this, but do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Tapping the abdominal cavity is just unbelievably good for, for getting rid of belly fat, okay? It's absolutely brilliant. So the Qigong is a really good way to strengthen up your digestive system. And if you, if you don't believe me, just try on lockdown, do three classes with me and you'll start to see that you'll start to get this lovely sculpted waist that everyone's now, all the early adopters are talking about. And I know we're gathering a lot of the uh, the social proof that's coming through. So I know, Jules, we've got loads, haven't we, of people going, I can't believe it, who would have thought? And it's true, because we're also conditioned to thinking that we've got to kind of like rush to the gym and like burn 1,500 calories on the treadmill and all, and all that's gonna do is stress the body and make you eat more. Whereas what we do is we relax the body Remember, we bring the energy in from the breath and then we, we make a lovely attention to our food, going, let's eat really nice, healthy, yummy food, roughly the same thing at the same time, every day, yum, yum, yum. Follow, if you're too hot, you do your histamine. If you're a bit too on the dampy, coldy side, do your anti-candida. Follow the advice in my book and do these exercises and you're gonna make a massive, massive difference. And so far, I've not sold you a single diet product or made you eat shed loads of protein or anything at all. It's just really sensible advice taking us back to what we kind of know to be true. Um, so the other thing then to say is that the, the final, the final sort of frontier of people with weight problems is that if, if I've just been describing you so far, there's one final step, which is people that have everything I've described and they also feel very, very cold and they're just completely exhausted. And if that's you, that what that means is that if you're just, just kind of a bit, bit, um, Puffy, okay, let's say your legs puff up in the day, you, you find yourself quite cellulite and that your thighs swell up, okay, that was also me. Um, that's because the kidneys are now involved, okay? So what's happened is the liver was involved to start with because of the stress, okay? Then the, the digestive system's got involved because the digestive system's weak, and then at the final stage, the kidneys are involved. And the kidneys are to do with your energy levels, burnout, burning the candles at both ends, 
Um, too much sex. If you're a man, you can be as, as a woman. You're all right. You get away with that one. Uh, it's men that have that problem. But women, too many pregnancies, uh, or too many miscarriages, or basically just children and trying to like have a full time job and run the family and all the stuff that goes with that. Um, all of that stuff wallops the kidneys. And if you're finding yourself that you are one of these people that, as you've got older, you used to not have a problem, and now it's the problem. And I've just described your symptoms your kidneys are involved as well. So what, yeah, cold hands, cold feet, yeah, that's kidneys as well. Uh, so basically, um, what you need to do is you need to download, by the way, everybody needs to download the spleen fact sheet. If you are on this feed, please, it's free. Jules and I spent hours on them. Download the spleen fact sheet. And now if, if I've just described you as well, download the kidney fact sheet and you need to strengthen up your kidneys. And that's really gonna like pump up the metabolism. How do we do this? Back to, back to my Qigong in the morning. If you really want to take it seriously, please add in Aaron's 12 Rivers Qigong as well. That will massively strengthen you up. And the best thing of all, when your organs are really shot to pieces, and if you really are struggling, then the healing sounds that I do each morning, the healing sounds of that laughter Qigong, honestly, that is the best thing for your body. That and meditation. And this is the thing, it's free, it's free, it's free, okay? It's just free. And that's what's so good about this stuff is that you just need to know what to do, okay? And that's the key thing. So if your kidneys are involved, then you need to always make sure that you're following all the advice on the kidney fact sheet, which we, are, we haven't got, we've got 10 minutes left. So I'm not gonna go into all the different kidney stuff because you can just look at the fact sheet and uh, join my classes. If you just, they're free. If you join the morning and the lunchtime as best you possibly can, um, and you don't even need to keep coming to the class once you've learned the moves, you just do them for yourself. But they become your daily exercises um, and they really make a difference to your metabolism, I promise. And the great thing is that I can sit here, having had such a weight problem myself, and thinking I can honestly, honestly tell you that I have walked the walk on this problem, okay? I was never thin, ever, ever. Even as a child, I was, I was quite a heavy child. I was never one of those like stick ones. Like it was, it was really mean. I was like, why not? Why don't I look like that? And I've had to learn this the hard way. And I promise you, if it's going to work on my crabby old body that's been through the mill a bit, then I promise you it will work on you. So one last thing then to say is, of course, as you all know, I am a bit gua sha lady and I love talking about bit gua sha. And um, one product I am going to tell you about, although this is the final thing, um, is that everything else I've told you is, is what you need to do for free, okay? And I promise you that will all really, really do the trick if you do it. But if you are looking for a killer product that you think, well, I do want to buy something actually, because I do want to buy something to kind of, I don't know, spur me on in my whole brand new uh, approach to my, my, my gorgeousness, is body combing is the thing, okay? And um, I just have to read this sentence out because it's so important. So if you are a person that has got like, <laughs> A few wobbly bits that you'd rather get rid of and you have been told by a western personal trainer or you know the western zeitgeist that you can't get rid of spot fat let me tell you they are wrong okay they are wrong because they are approaching it from a western perspective but from an eastern perspective haha -ha, you can get rid of spot fat and you do it with the body comb whoop whoop and it works okay and the reason it works is i've had to print it out because i thought I'm, i've got to tell you this exactly because the pressure of body combing stimulates the subcutaneous tissue to help the body parts of fat accumulation exercise passively okay it's brilliant okay is what you need to know it works so basically if you've got belly fat so luckily for you i've got fat everywhere so i've got i've got arms tummy and legs and it's all disappearing thank god for the comb now if i comb myself non-stop every single day for about 45 minutes it probably would have all shifted by now but i like to stand with what i preach so um i do about two minutes every day in the shower because that's all i have time for and the trick if you have fat around the middle which is why i've been sat on the side of my sink or feed is that this is a channel called the dimai which means the, it, the belt girdle in english which is a deeper channel okay not connected to any particular organ sort of per se but has a massive relationship to the, the liver and a huge relationship to belly fat so you take your comb and you comb around you start at the back okay and you're combing around from the back to the front like this and you want to really do it, okay, comb, 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 comb. And then I comb, I go down the outside of my arms, I do this, this is what I do every single day, okay, like that. And then I comb around from the back to the front. And you really want to comb it, so you want to bring it up red. Don't do this on bare skin, okay, I'm showing you just because I'm teaching you, okay, but 
you, you want to do this in the water, the shower water does the trick and you just want to bring it up red, okay? So probably about 10 strokes. If you're very sensitive, you can just see it coming up red there. If your skin is very sensitive or you've got quite a lot of sort of cellulitis -y type stuff going on, go really gently. And also these combs are handmade. So some of them are slightly more pointy than others because it depends on the artisan who's making them. They're all, you know, slightly unique, which is a nice thing. So, you know, when you first get it, don't start hacking away at yourself. Go nice and gently. It should feel kind of zingy and stimulating-y and you want it to come up red. We're looking for the red. So we do down the arm across here, around the dye mite, and then we go, hence again while I'm on my sink, so we're going down the outside of the leg. Ooh, look at this, look at this. Jules, this is one for the outtakes. <laughs> down the outside and up the inside, okay? Like this. And you want to do that in the shaft. Now I have um, nice, what should we say, athletic thighs, that's probably a nice way of putting them. So basically I give loads of attention to my thighs and bum, so I will really go over my thighs like this in the shower, I'm properly going for it. I mean, like the other day, Mr. Brindle walked in when I was in the shower and, oh my God, you burnt your legs. I was like, uh, no, I'm combing. He's like, oh God, she's off again. <laughs> my wife, she's so nuts. She was just a humble masseur when he, when he married me and I've turned into this nutcase. Anyway, so basically, um, I will have a right old go over my thighs. It feels absolutely amazing. I will really pay attention and it will have this really lovely feeling. It will come up red. Go gently when you're new to this, okay? And I promise you, you will, at the first instance, it will feel kind of like zingy, like whoop kind of feeling. And then give it a week and you'll go, do you know what? I think my legs are better. And the other great thing about the comb is that you can do it through clothing because I am spleen kidney deficient. So I'm right at the, uh, like, I've just gave, taken you through four different layers. Well, guess what? I was at level four, well done me. Collect 200 pounds and what, pass go, why don't I? But um, what I did was um, I will take this comb with me, say on holiday, when it gets, when the climate goes hot, of course, oof, my legs swell up immediately, thank you. Um, so basically I will comb my legs, it's like through my leggings like this. It feels amazing, even through clothing. And it stops you needing to buy those kind of heavy leg products. So that is, I think we're nearly out of time. I think uh, Jules is going to ding the, uh, ding the tired unicorn at me. Um, I, sorry, I didn't really get to see any of the questions. Um, so um, I know that Jules, you've been very kindly answering loads of them. I really, really hope that, uh, can you use the comb outside the shower? Yes, you can. Uh, yes, you totally can. You can use the comb with oil or you can use it in the bath. It is the best in the shower though. Um, you could put a towel on the shower floor to just really protect it. That that would work. Um, you know, I know it sounds a bit mucky on the old towel, but if it's just like or, or something on the floor that would stop it. Uh, you have to be, yeah, you will. If you go too hard, it does, it can bruise. So you need to basically go really, really gently with it to start with. And also the reason you're bruising is because basically there's... Um, stuff that needs to come out. It's because there's, there's stuff sat there and you're we're basically we're encouraging the circulation system. I mean, I had bruising after bruising after bruising when I first started because my everything was shot to pieces. All really because of the, um, the, it, the, the, I mean, I was never in great shape anyway. I kind of seemed to inherit kind of like not great metabolism. Um, and then the twin pregnancy really just walloped it off into a whole new stratosphere. Um, so that was that. So. Uh, I have got one minute, 57 seconds left. So everybody please to say when you are doing body combing, please go very gently. Uh, there are some contraindications. They are on the website. Um, I hope you found this a useful feed. I've loved talking about it. Sorry, I haven't been able to answer many questions, but there was a lot to go through. Um, suffice to say, Jules and I will get this into a fact sheet, but not quite yet. Uh, and do please join me on the morning Qigong and the lunchtime live, um, live meditation because this is the stuff that's going to really make the difference, that and understanding what's going on. So those things will make a massive difference. Lots of the content's in the book. I have to stop talking. Have a lovely evening. Thank you all so much for joining me and supporting everything that we're doing. Jules, again, I didn't even have time to take the mickey out of you tonight, Jules. <laughs> See you all at 8 a.m. God bless. Have a lovely evening. And there we go. We're all going to be fabulous from this moment on. Good night. <laughs>